Hello, so this video here is for my Geometry CP class that you had freshman elections this morning. So we're going to go over a little bit about what you missed in class and I will, you can work on the homework. I'm going to show you number nine on the homework, so hopefully that will help you out. So first off, I just want to talk a little bit about the fact that I know you can't really see it all that well, but if you look in the description below, uh, I have the Google slides of this right here so you can see it much better. So miter point right here is one of the really good opportunities that you will have to use angles in your lifetime. If you want to own your own home and you have to do some construction on things in your life, you may have to use angles for something like this. Moving on, one of the vocab words that we've talked about before is a ray. So a ray is a part of a line. It has one end point and extends indefinitely in one direction. So in this case, we see M, O, and O, P, and then an, an arrow. So, yeah, you can see that. So, we, we could refer this to as ray, M, P, and we could write it as an M, P with an arrow, and we could also refer to it as ray, M, O, and that would all be talking about pretty much the same line. So, that's how we could talk about it. If you choose a point on a line that a point determines exactly two rays called opposite rays. Opposite rays are always collinear. So in this case, um, the, this is an example of opposite rays and what they would look like. And the way that we would call them is their starting point, J, and their finishing point, H. So if we look to the left-hand side, we can see J, H, and then to the right side, it's J, K. Now, it's J is where it starts and it goes towards H. This one is J where it starts and it goes towards K. So there's the correct way to um, name a ray is where it starts and the direction it goes in versus just left to right or right to left. An angle is formed by two non-collinear rays that have a common midpoint we call vertex. The rays are called the sides of the angle. So in this case right here, we could call this array, we would call this ray XZ, we call this ray XY, we could call both of these a side to an angle. A couple names we could give this is angle ZXY, we could angle call it angle YXZ. Because there's a little three right there, we could call it angle three. And because there's no other rays or lines coming off of it, off that vertex X, we could even probably call it X. My students, I would say you do not want to call this um, angle X. Do not get in the habit of calling it by a single letter uh, talking about the vertex. When naming angles, use three letters. So like I just said, we could we have three different options. So this one here is not necessarily as commonly useful, I would say, but this is another way to sort of give an opportunity. Hold on. This is a, another way to give an opportunity to describe something. So in that picture over there, we see S and R are on the interior of that angle. We see P and O are on the exterior of that angle. So it's rare that you're gonna be asked which is, in, which is interior, which is exterior, but it's another way you could use to describe a point in terms of an angle that you knew about. So if say something wasn't labeled well, you could use interior, exterior to describe something. Next, if you go into your textbooks, um, this is the first example for section 1.4. So if you want to follow along with that, so if you're gonna, we're going to go through the example. If you draw that picture, and I would say you want to just draw straight lines. You don't have to have two-dimensional streets. You can just have a single line. Um, and again, you probably want to look at the PowerPoint. So we got A, B, C, K, and L. We get J, G, C, and E. This right here we get G, H, and L. And over here we 
get this ray BD. We have angle 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Alright, so I want you to draw that yourself. This is one of the things we did in class. And then we're going to answer some of the following questions. So while you're drawing that, or, or maybe just pause it here and draw it. Once you're done drawing, unpause it. All right, so once you're done drawing, this is what you want to ask. Name all angles that have B as a vertex. Pause it, answer the question. So all the angles that have B as a vertex, we can see are Actually, I'm just going to show you on here because it's probably going to be a little. Actually, can I zoom in? Nope. Here's what we can do. Uh, sorry, this is kind of awkward. So name all angles that have B as vertex. So we can see that A, B, D has B as a vertex, D, B, C has B as a vertex, and we can even say one and two have B as a vertex. And we can see the answers here. All right, this is an example. All right, again in your book, name the sides of angle three. So we can look here, we see angle three is equivalent to angle B, C, E. So you can say the sides are B, C, and CE. What's another name for GHL? So GHL could also be named LHG or 7. Or H because there's nothing in its area. Fourth question, name a point in the interior of DBK. DBK the only thing I see in the interior that's not on the angle is point E. All right, coming back. So again, go through those, make sure that you're able to come to those same conclusions, put comments or have questions ready for me tomorrow. Those are the same questions right there. This is one of the last ones. You should be pretty familiar with this. Right angles. The only time that you know it's a right angle is if you see that little mark right there. I don't know if you can really see in this video, but um, there's that little half of a square in the corner of those two rays. So this symbol means that it's a 90 degree angle. If you do not see it, you cannot assume that it's 90 degrees. Acute angles are always going to be less than 90 degrees and obtuse angles are always going to be more than 90 degrees, but less than 180 degrees. So if you see 180 degrees, um, so sort of a flat line with a point in the middle, would not call that an angle, is not obtuse. Congruent angles, just as segments that are the same measure are congruent, angles that are congruent also have the same measure. So a way that we will be drawing that is right here, we can see C, B, E right here, it says, two, two uh, arcs in it, and B, E, D right here also has two arcs in it. So we could say that those two are congruent. Right here, A, B, C, we could say that that 65 degrees right there, and that's 65 degrees right there, they're also marked with a single line. Therefore, A, B, C, and D, E, F are also congruent in this picture. So a ray that divides an angle into two congruent angles is called an angle bisector. So we've heard the word bi for bicycle, um, bisexual, bi, bionic, I don't know if that would work, bicentennial, twice a century, right? So bi we know means two. So in this case, WY is bisecting XYZ and we know that because we can see that both of these are equal. So bisector means that both, both angles are going to be equal and 
this is exactly halfway in between the two sides of your angle. All right, so in your book, we practice numbers one through 29. I'm going to do number nine for you as there is quite some confusion on it. Also, I apologize ahead of time. This is unedited simply so I can get this out and um, in front of you rather than trying to make it perfect or entertaining. So thank you again for watching this and for allowing yourself to get caught up. So number nine, I want you to go ahead and look onto page 41 of your Glencoe geometry book. If someone else that is not in my class is watching this, I will be drawing and asking the question up here. So number nine, it says in figure J, uh, KJ and KL are opposite rays, KN bisects LKM. All right, so replay that if you have to. Draw that while I'm doing this. So you might have to replay that to hear it again so you can draw it. So you should be able to do it just based on the words. So it says in figure KJ, or Ray KJ, and Ray KL are opposite rays. So KJ and KL. KJ, KL, opposite rays. All right, from there, it says KN bisects LKM. KN bisects, so there's also a picture, LKM. So that means that this angle would be the same as this angle. And we're creating a new M and an N here. All right, from there it says, if LKM equals seven X minus five, LKM equals seven X minus five, and it says, measure of NKM equals 3x plus 9. NKM equals 3x plus 9. Find LKM. Find LKM. So we have to find the value for x. Now, the things that we know based on the fact that these this is a bisector is that this is going to equal this. So we can say that M KN, or you could say measure of angle MKN is equal to the measure of M, no, sorry, NKL, measure of angle NKL. So we know that L, uh, sorry, 3x plus 9 is equal to 3x plus 9. And we know that because this bisects it, one, two of these is going to make up 7x minus 5. So we can say that 7x minus 5 is equal to two of these, 3x plus 9. All right, another thing you could say is you could say that mkn plus nkl equals mkl. We could also write that. So from here, we can solve for x and then plug x back in to find out what mkl is. So if I distribute here, 6x plus 18. All right, add five to both sides. Subtract 6x from both sides. End up with x equals positive 23. All right, if x equals out, let's plug it back in here. 7 times 23 minus 5. Let's see. I know that 7 times 25 minus 2 minus 5, that's going to be the same thing. And I know that I can distribute out, and I, I know 7 times 25 is going to equal, let's see, 100 is 4 of them, 175. So it's going to be 175. 
minus 2 times 7 is 14, minus 5. So let's see, that's going to be 161 minus 5 is 156. So final answer, we should get 156, and that's what it says in the book as well. So that was number 9. So the homework for tonight, as a reminder, is right here, right over there, page 42 and 30 to negative 42. And lastly, here is the homework for the uh, geometry honor students. Skate, hold on, hold on. That's not it. Where are you? That's not it. Don't forget we have an early release tomorrow. Here it is. This is the one I was, I, it took me a, a while to solve this one. Found it on Google. All right, so, you had triangle there. It's saying it's the hardest easy math problem solved for X. All right, so we get a triangle there. We have some values. We have right there 50 and 30. We have up here 60 and 20. We don't really know any relationships here. We have X. We know that, for example, BFE is supplementary with EFA, A being over there. And we can figure some things out. So you have to solve for X. That's what your, that's what your goal is. All right? So uh, thank you for watching. I hope this I hope you found this useful. Comment any questions you might have. Uh, I can check it in the early morning tomorrow morning. Hopefully school doesn't get canceled for a hurricane. Um, stay weird.